In this video, I will talk about the vessels that supply the brain. As far as I can point them on this model. Look at here. Down here, there is the vertebral artery. We have a pair of vertebral artery. Remember, vertebral artery arises from the subclavian artery. And then they ascend through the uh, transfer, transverse foramenae. And then they enter the cranial cavity through the foramen magnum. Once they enter the cranial cavity, they kill off a vessel called pica, posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Pica generally gives off a little tweak or the branch that is called the posterior spinal artery, which supplies the posterior aspect of the spinal cord. So you have a posterior spinal artery here, another one on this side. On both uh, sides, you have the posterior spinal artery. Before joining each other, vertebral arteries give a small tweak from their internal surface. These small tweaks join together and form this artery. This is the anterior spinal artery. Runs along the anterior aspect of the spinal cord and supplies to it. Two vertebral artery joins closer to the uh, bulbopontine sulcus and forms the basilar artery. We can see the basilar artery. Look at on this cadaver. This one here. Here, here is the basilar artery running inside the running inside the um, basilar sulcus. The first branch of the basilar artery is the ICA, anterior inferior cerebellar artery, this one. This ICA supplies middle one-third of the cerebellum. Down here, PICA supplies lower one-third of the cerebellum. After giving of the ICA, basilar artery gives of labyrinthine artery. Labyrinthine artery supplies the labyrinths in the inner ear. The cochlea, uh, semicircular ducts, canals, and the vestibulum. Then there are small branches called pontine branches supplying the pons. Then basilar artery, before ending up with its two terminal branches, gives off superior cerebellar artery. This is the superior cerebellar artery. Superior cerebellar artery supplies upper one-third of the cerebellum. There is something here to remember for you is that uh, is this posterior cerebral artery. This is the posterior cerebral artery. Oculomotor nerve. Oculomotor nerve passes between the posterior cerebral artery and superior cerebellar artery. Then this is the internal carotid artery. Internal carotid artery gives a branch that's called posterior communicants artery, which connects carotid system to the vertebral system. We don't see, but uh, there is middle cerebral artery, anterior cerebral artery, and anterior communicating artery, but we do not see them on this model. But let me show you, let me show you, uh, 
The spicer basil or erdri, basil or erdri, here. You see, case of this erdri, this is the superior cerebellar artery, superior cerebellar artery. This is the posterior cerebral artery, posterior cerebral artery. Between two, here is the nerve, oculomotor nerve, coming through. And then, this is the, this is the internal carotid artery, internal carotid artery. Right beside it, you have the absence nerve in the cavernous sinus. So the cavernous sinus is here, cavernous sinus is here, and then look at this one here. You can see this easily. This is the posterior communicating artery, which connects carotid system to the vertebral system. Then this internal carotid artery gives off an uh, middle cerebral artery going this way and anterior cerebral artery going this way. And two, two anterior cerebral artery is, is connected by the anterior communicating artery. And let's see other structures we can see here. This is the, look at, this is the remnant of olfactory tract. Up here you have the olfactory pulp. So this is the olfactory sulcus. Medial to the olfactory sulcus, you have the uh, straight gyrus. Straight gyrus. These are orbital gyri and uh, orbital sulci. Here is the frontal pole, temporal pole. Back here, you have the occipital pole. 